Hi there. You might remember a week or two ago I made a video about how long my LiPo 4 battery lasted between charges. And I had, a vi had a, an email sent to me from an interested viewer uh, querying or looking at why uh, LiPo 4 batteries can last so long uh, given the fact they've only got a fairly small capacity. So let's have a look at what the, uh, the actual email said. The email was sent from uh, Richard M0RBG. And he said, Hi Tim, I hope you don't mind me dropping you a line, but I've just watched your interesting video on LiPo 4 batteries and I have a question for you. My background is similar to yours in that I had a 40-year break from the hobby before getting on the air in 2005. And like you, I'm a keen portable operator, mainly parks on the air and worldwide floor and four, floor and four even, both SSB and CW. In my car, I run a TS480 SAT with a variety of antennas powered by a 120 amp hour le leisure battery. I worked in the electrical industry all my life, but I'm not a battery expert, so here is my question. The radio takes about 14 amps running 75 watts SSB. So how does a 22 amp hour LiPo 4 battery last for over five hours running 100 watts as described in your video? What is the science behind its performance and how long would you guess it would last operating CW in a typical pile-up situation? He goes on to say, the leisure battery is extremely heavy, of course, and difficult to take out of the boot of the car. And obviously a LifePo 4 battery would be much more convenient, particularly on holiday, in that we could take it out of the car to charge overnight. And lastly, where did you purchase your battery and have you had any safety concerns? Looking forward to hearing from you, Richard, M0RBG. Well, thank you for the email, Richard. Now, yes, it, on the face of it, why would a 22 amp hour battery last so long when you're running 100 watts SSB? Well, there is a way you can calculate this in advance, but it does depend on one or two variables concerning the mode you're running, obviously how much power you're running, the capacity of your battery, and also the nature of your operating as well. So let's take a look into this. So the first thing you have to work out is the current draw, or likely current draw, of the radio that you're using. Now, I used an FT891 from Yezu. On the left, we've got VE3 IPS, and on the right, we've got OH8STN. That's Julian, who's got a very uh, big YouTube channel. Now, between the pair of them, they've basically come up with the same sort of data. Uh, on receive, the FT891 draws about one amp, uh, near enough. And then up, we go up to 100 watts, you can see that we've got 15.4 amps uh, for VE3 IPS and 15.2 for uh, Julian OH8, OH8, even STN. And uh, in between, uh, pretty similar data. So I'm able to determine then that the maximum current draw I would have for my 891 would be about 15 or so amps, all right? So we know that. But what else do we need to know? Well, the other important thing is the mode you're using and the likely duty cycle of that mode. Now, the ARRL have published some very interesting information we can look at. So let's take a peek at it, shall we? So we can see from this table that uh, they've published uh, basically the different duty factors or duty cycles according to the different modes that you run. You see the conversational SSB, where we don't run any sort of processing power as such. We're looking at around a 20% duty factor or duty cycle. When we get to uh, SSB that's running with processor, with a processor, for example, then we go up to 40%. Uh, FM voice, uh, basically duty modes, all 100%. Uh, conversational CW, 40%. And if you just uh, put out a carrier and you're tuning, for example, that would also be 100%. Now, I used uh, SSB, and I used uh, processing, uh, speech processing that was switched on. And uh, so that would mean that would fall into the 40% category. So conversational SSB, 40% is what I would be. So my duty cycle, therefore, is 40%. So now we know that, let's look at how then we can calculate uh, the likely uh, life, lifespan, if you like, or the, the span between charges of your battery according to how you use it. So this is the information we need to consider. Uh, firstly, we know our duty cycle of our chosen mode. So I know, for example, SSB is 40%. Uh, I know the maximum current draw of my radio at 100 watts. Uh, that would be about 15, just over 15 amps. I know my received current draw is going to be about one amp. My operating style. Now, what we mean by operating style effectively is are we calling CQ, CQ all the time, or are we doing sort of search and pounce, where you just scan the bands and call in to try and work people at various times. Uh, we need to take a bit of a, a rule of thumb, sort of finger in the air, sort of guess here, if you like. But I'm going with the fact that I was calling CQ all the time. I was basically running frequencies all the time, didn't do any search and pounce. 
So effectively, uh, I was operating on a 50-50 transmit-receive basis. So 50% of the time I was calling CQ and transmitting and speaking to people, 50% of the time I was receiving. That's kind of where we're going with here, okay, with this. And also, uh, the capacity of the battery, for example, here as well. So for me, uh, I use an Ultramax 22 amp hour. So now we know all that information, let's calculate the likely uh, gap between charges of a fully charged 22 amp hour LiPo 4. And let's see how it tallies with what uh, I experienced. So here we are. Uh, my, S my, my case, I was running SSB on parks on the air, heavy use, calling CQ with the FT891. So 100 watts SSB with uh, processing, 40% duty cycle, 15.2 amps peak, 100 watts. And uh, therefore, with the 40% duty cycle and 15.2 amps, my average sort of current draw was about 6.1 amps. That's 15.2 times 40%. My RX draw, my, re my received draw, as we know, is about 1 amp. Now, we also know then my operating style was 50-50 approximately between transmit and receive. So therefore, we can work out the average per hour of my uh, current draw. In which case, for me, it's 6.1 amps. That's my uh, sort of 40% uh, duty cycle maximum draw on 15 amps. Um, plus 1 amp received divided by 2, because it's 50-50. That gives us an average per hour current draw of about 3.5 amps. Okay? What we also need to bear in mind as well is that with any LifePo 4, the battery management system tends to cut in when you uh, basically get to about 90% discharge. That's when you, the, uh, the discharge curve of the battery drops off like a cliff, unlike a lead acid where it sort of degrades sort of steadily over time. With a LiPo 4, it holds at about 12.7, 12.8 volts until you get to about 90% discharge, and then it literally just drops right down to about 10, something like 10, uh, 10 volts. So at, at that point, the BMS uh, system kicks in, and stops the battery uh, going. Now you get about 90% discharge, therefore 22 amp hours really is good for about 20 amp hours, okay? So we've got 20 amp hours, we already know our average use is three and a half amps, divide that, it comes to 5.7 hours, approximately five hours and 42 minutes, if something like that anyway, of use. And if you refer back to my video, we were basically near enough exactly that. So I had a fully charged 22 amp hour life pull 4 battery, Exactly the same power uh, as we as we saw there, 100 watts, FT891, 5050, transmit, receive, and it lasted something between just over five and a half hours. So it's basically near enough bang on. Now, if I was running it slightly differently with the FT891, so I was going sort of one to four ratio, so transmit for 20% uh, of the time, receive for 80. I was sort of searching pounds, just scrolling up and down the bands, just trying to work people as I can hear them sort of thing then it obviously would be a le less of a strain on the battery and would last a lot longer. So looking at the FT891 again in that respect, if I was using 100 watts here, then if I was doing casual operating, then we can see from our calculation, uh, the RX to receive draw is still one amp. But our, and, our, and again, our peak draw is still 6.1 amps. But of course, the receive takes up more of the, of the time. So therefore, it comes to an average of about two amps. So that would be about 10 hours operating time approximately uh, with the FT891 on a more casual basis using 100 watts and the 22 amp hour battery. So let's look at Richard's example then. Now he's using 75 watt CW with his TS480 SAT. So let's, uh, let's check that out. So uh, first of all, 75 watt CW with basically looking at the ARRL, 40% duty cycle. So it gives us basically um, 75 watts 14 amp is the draw, divided by 40% is 5.6 amps. Now, with the TS480, it's a little bit more power hungry than the 891. It draws one and a half amps with no signal rather than one. And if, for example, we're doing this quite casually in the same sort of one to four ratio between TX and, and receive, then we can work out that the average sort of uh, hourly draw be something like about 2.33 amps, between two and two and a half amps, depending on how busy you are. Um, again, if he's using a 22 amp hour battery, the BMS will cut in at around 90% discharge. So 20 divided by 2.3 is around eight, just over eight and a half hours of approximate usage. Now, if therefore he was going down my road and he was basically running frequencies, activating parks on the air, he's gonna be going more towards a 50-50 sort of usage between transmit and receive. 
And if we look at that, again, we know, for example, it's 5.6 amps, isn't it, for the uh, sort of uh, maximum sort of draw. And if we then uh, take the receive at 1.5 at 7.1 divided by 2. So again, his average is going to be about 3.5 amps. So very similar, really, to the FT891 on 75 watts. CW, again, we're looking at something like about 5.5 to 5 and 3 quarter hours usage. OK, so quite similar to mine, really. He's running a bit less power um, which benefits him because the 480 seems to be a bit more power hungry than the 891 uh, it's, it's got basically another a bit extra sort of current draw and receive and it looks to be a little bit hungry as well on transmit but there we are 75 watt CW for him would be the same for me at 100 watts SSB in terms of the overall uh, demands on a 22 amp hour LiPo 4 battery of course one mode we haven't considered is um, digital so let's look at FT, uh, FT8 as an example here, as our final one. So let's take a peek at that. So with FT8 and the LifePo 4, again with the 891, FT891 this time, uh, let's say, for example, we're, we're trying to activate a park using FT8. Now we're using 20 watts FT8, okay? Because obviously it puts a lot more strain on our system using a full duty cycle mode. So 20 watts FT8 using the 891, 100% duty cycle this time. So we're drawing 8.3 amps with 20 watts. Our RX draw is still a 1 amp, so we're doing 50-50, 8.3 plus 1 divided by 2 is 4.6 amps. So again, 22 amp hours, take off the 10%, 20 amps, 20 amps divided by 4.6 is just about 4 hours 20 minutes. So even though we're operating with appreciably less power on FT8 because of the, of the extra duty cycle, the demand that mode has, therefore even with the same uh, battery capacity, uh, we would have a little bit less operating time, about four and a half hours or so there. So overall, you need to have a bit of a beefier battery with FT8 because you're using, even though you might use a bit less power, you're using a fuller duty cycle. So there we go. I hope that's helped uh, you, Richard, and thank you for your email. And I hope if you're interested in the older, you know, the, the amount of uh, capacity you've got left in your battery and how much you can get out of it during an activation, that gives you an idea. And obviously, you can play around with the figures. You can look at the uh, the capacity of the battery you've got. You can look at the power you're running, the mode you're running. Just make those adjustments. Um, the, the calculations are, are relatively straightforward, as long as you know the duty cycle uh, on the mode of the mode you're using, the capacity of your battery, the likely sort of current draw at peak and also the receive draw of, of your radio that is then um, you should be able to really pretty much get a fairly good handle into the capacity of battery that you need okay and how long it's likely to last anyway hope that's given you some inspiration and a look into that and if you've got any comments or questions put them in the, uh, the comment section below okay thanks for watching and we'll catch you again soon for another one bye for now